Perfect. Thank you. Good morning, Rio de Janeiro. Good morning, Latin America. Welcome to Sidra Medicine. Uh, we have a live case for you, so I have a big team here. I want to thank all of them without mentioning names because a lot of them here uh, for preparing this case today. So I'm going to hand the microphone to Dr. Zakaria, who is our fellow, to tell you about the case. Zakaria, go ahead. Slides, please. Okay, next slide. So unfortunately, not up until December 2020, when we found that she has a batch with pre pulmonary regurgitation. So in March 2021, she underwent surgical pulmonary valve replacement using 27 millimeter St. Jude tri-fricta uh, tissue valve. And in October 2021, she underwent placement of ICD. At the time, she had syncope complete uh, right bundle branch block with uh, QRS uh, fragmentation. Recently, her uh, CBX showing severe exercise intolerance with uh, VO2 max of 19 ml per kg per minute only. This is her recent ECG showing normal sinus rhythm with right bundle branch complete uh, right bundle branch block and her QRS duration is 175 milliseconds. From this transthoracic echo clips, you can see that the severe pulmonary valve regurgitation, uh, hugely dilated right ventricle and right atrium. We have done an, a CT scan to measure her uh, RV uh, volumes and also the RVOT. Uh, here we can see at the valve level, it is 24 by 6 millimeters. This cross-section showing that the coronaries are away from the uh, valve area. Next. And we are intending to to do a transcatheter pulmonary valve replacement. Great. Thank you, Zakaria. So as you heard, this uh, young lady uh, was born with a trilogy of fellow, had initial surgery at the age of two years, and then just about two years ago, she had surgical pulmonary valve replacement, the trifecta. I'm sure most of you heard last week that St. Uh, Abbott withdrew the trifecta valve from the market because of early deterioration. So she has severe PR and exercise intolerance. So we decided to bring her to the cath lab today to implant a percutaneous pulmonic valve. So what we did, we had access in her right humeral vein, right humeral artery, and left humeral vein. And we did hemodynamic assessment of her uh, pressures as well as her saturation. She does not have much of gradient across the athlo tract and basically severe PR. Her RV pressure was normal and we did the first angiogram. Can we go to the first angio, please? Go to the first angio. Alad, do you want to show them how to? So this is the first angiogram. You can see this is the frontal. Show them both, the frontal and lateral, please. You can see the ICD generator. And there is the trifecta ring. There is, uh, as you can see, free PR. See that? Free PR. The brand is they look good. And lipophase, normal LV function. Next picture. Then what we did, we did balloon sizing. This is a 30 millimeter tie shack balloon. And we had the measurements about a 24 millimeter. Again, the surgical valve was a 27 millimeter trifecta. So it's expected to be 24, 25 millimeter or so. So we believe implanting a 28 millimeter valve should be a good strategy to relieve uh, the pulmonary insufficiency. And of course, as I said, she does not have pulmonary stenosis at all. Any question on the case, Alejandro, or what we are planning to do? 
Great case, uh, Seattle, as always. Um, the first question is um, in 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 this uh, kind of cases that they have a, a, a pre-implanted valve uh, bioprosthesis. It's a 27. Uh, that that balloon is just to is just to make measurements, or maybe you can enlarge a little bit the the annulus just to make sure because the factor cannot be break so br broken so uh, is this just to 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 measure or maybe just to enlarge a little bit the annulus that's a great question Alejandro so actually when we did the first angiogram just the simple angiogram go back to the uh, angiogram before the measurements were not, uh, you know, what we wanted. They were, uh, you know, small. So I thought, let me put a, a balloon and inflate as much as I can to see what size. So the, the primary purpose for the ballooning in this case, to see what size balloon I can get. And this is a 30 millimeter, four centimeter balloon. So I feel confident that a 28, a 27 millimeter size valve should be okay for her. If there was a stenosis in this valve, then I would have used a high pressure angioplasty balloon to get rid of anything. But here in this case, there was only 10 millimeter mercury gradient between the MPA and the right ventricle. Perfect, yet. Any um, any uh, um, picture of the coronaries? Do you think that is necessary in in this setting that you have a bioprosthetic valve? Good question. So, as Zakaria mentioned, the CT angio, the coronaries were visualized and they are far from the uh, RV tract. So, especially in a patient with a ring. I usually do not bother to do selective coronaries to do that. If she had a native after tract or a conduit, then yes, that's a must step to do in every transcatheter pulmonary valve replacement. Perfect. Any other comment, question, or maybe Siad can go on? Okay, Siad, seems Great. that you can continue. Yes, so I did in the groin, after we did the diagnostic part, I replaced the sheet and I put a 24 French dry seal sheet. Can you please, the camera point to the groin? Camera to the groin, to the groin, to the table. I think, you know, the, the team here, they, they need the dexterity with the, uh, with the camera so that they can zoom. Okay, now zoom at my finger here at the groin. Here. Uh, you, you back here. Guys, you can do this faster today so that we will not have to uh, spend the night here. Okay, so in, in the right humeral vein, I have a 24 French dry seal sheath. That's it right here. Yeah. You can use the camera on, on ceiling, uh, Shabab, the camera on the ceiling to focus on the on the groin. Okay. And in the right femoral artery, five French, the groin, what I did, I used two per close systems to pre-close it so that at the end, I don't have to hold the pressure or de even do the figure of eight. So I have two stitches here, one here, one here, one at three o'clock and one at two o'clock. And in the left femoral vein, I have five French sheet. I placed a pigtail catheter in the MPA. So now we're going to go live. Go live with the camera. Go live. Live floro, live floro, and make it full picture, full picture, please. Full picture, the floro. Yes, this one. That's good. So you can see the dry seal sheath. You can see the thing, and you can see my lender request wire. I positioned it in the left pulmonary artery. So crimped the valve already, 28 millimeter venous. P valve, 25 millimeter long, which means its effective length is 45 millimeter. But the straight part is a 25 millimeter. And Allah, our chief technologist, uh, equipped it here because we do uh, a number of uh, these valves, uh, Allah are trained, and we don't require a clinical specialist to come and crimp the valve with him. So Allah, can you bring the valve and we will put the valve over the lender equipped wire. So we're going to wet the, the wire so that here, wet, make sure that it's wet, clean the okay. wire. We gave the patient 
So far, 12,000 units of heparin were monitoring the ACT to keep it over 250 seconds. And now we can place the wire. Go ahead. Ziad, this is Francisco. Oh, yes. Hi, Francisco, how are you? Good, good to hear you. Can you comment on if that's uh, any difference to any, any PA branch you choose to park the wire? What is your preference or what elements you consider uh, to, to make that question. choice? So initially, Francisco, if you may recall, you were involved in the first uh, transcatheter valve in the US. We uh, prefer the left body arc because it's straight shot. Over the last few years, uh, it, we have been varying either right or left depending on which branch is the larger. In this case, both branches are similar size and the wire went easily to the distal left body artery, so we left it to go there. But I can tell you I've done a number of cases where the wire was the RPA without any problem. The presence of the dry seal sheath, as also you know, makes your life much easier. So now I have the dry seal sheath there and I'm going to advance the, uh, the uh, valve to the uh, system, and uh, hopefully we should not encounter any problem at all with the advancement of the valve. So now I open the uh, dry seal, and now I close the valve, and uh, Ala is gonna hold the wire. We have live floro. Can you go live floro? Live floro, please. Biplane, live floro, biplane, okay. split the image. So so now I'm advancing. Oh. Ala is holding. So I'm going to do a floral biplane here so that for you guys to see when I advance. So you can see my sheath is well across the valve. I'm going to advance more, advance more, advance. And now I am right. Did the wire go? <laughs> so I'm advancing here. So it went quite easily. So I'm going to retract the dry seal sheath. And we're going to start open right here. And then I have the pigtail catheter, which you see it in the RPA. We'll do an angiogram there once I track the sheath from here. I'm going to track just like here. And that's it. And now we're going to do clockwise rotation. Clockwise rotation to deploy the valve. Keep going. And, you know, sometimes there is delay in the, in the valve. So open. Oh, no, no, you hold it like, just one second, one second, one second. You hold here, you hold the handle like this, and then you do clockwork rotation like this. Okay. okay. Yep, slowly, slowly. Z so there is the valve here. Well, when yes. you do, do, don't pull back all the way the, the, dry, the dry seal? Just in case I want to retract uh, Francisco. So I leave the dry seal there just in case I want to retract. Keep opening a little bit more. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do an angiogram in the MPA with this pigtail catheter. So we're going to hook up here. Yeah, just relax. We're going to hook up here. Let's give here 25 at 25, 800 PSI. Yeah, so you can see now that's actually a good position, but we're going to do a picture here. Twenty-five, twenty-five, eight hundred psi. You ready? So I'm going to do the cine right here. Oh, sorry, sorry, we did not. I did not uh, open it to the patient. My apologies. Uh, 20, we did not give anything. 25, 25. Ready? Yeah. Good. So we are well into the LPA, guys. You agree? Yes, agree. Yeah. And, and besides of that, yes. I, I oh. assume that you will use as a landmark the bioprosthetic ring to, to set up the proximal part of the valve. Yeah. Right, but I want the valve because it's 45 millimeter long. I don't want it all to hang into the RV of the tract. I want to put as much as possible in the branches, then I, I can bring it back. So what I'm going to do here is the following. So 
I'm going to bring a sheath here and I'm going to continue opening. So just, just one second. So I'm going to push here the wire. Yep. It came back nicely. Now open, open. Yep. Open, 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 open. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Now, where is the pigtail catheter that we put here? Just one second. Blood pressure, keep opening, keep on because I don't want the blood pressure. Like to we'd like to see the yeah, lateral gonna... CL also, if it's possible. Yep, we'll, we'll, yep, the blood pressure is coming back. Keep opening, 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 open, open, no. open, open, open. Okay, we released it completely now. You can see that the blood pressure came back nicely. The pigtail. And a tiny wire for the pigtail, a tiny the glide wire. Um, the glide wire, store that. So, you know, when you don't open the valve completely, sometimes okay. so the blood pressure drops because the... Let, let me see, um, just a, as a comment, uh, can you uh, yes. just uh, um, explain your way of thinking of using self-spandable valve over bioprothesis instead of uh, balloon expandable uh, valves? I'll ask this question in a second. Uh, Alejandro, let me just first, let me first try to do a picture here in the right ventricle with this pigtail catheter without tangling the, the leads because the leads, the pacemaker leads are sometimes a problem. But what I can, actually I can do a picture from the side on the, uh, of the sheath just for position, just remove this. Okay, give me 50 cc syringe and give me contrast. Give me the contrast. So I'm gonna do a, a quick injection, hand injection, to the side arm of the sheath and see where we are. Okay. Good. So you can see the branches are open. The open cells are um, at the bifurcation, but there is good flow in both branches. And the, uh, the stint, straight part of the stint is where we want it in the MPA. And now the important thing is to make sure that the, uh, the valve is completely released from the system. So what I'm gonna do, come on, hold the sheet here. Underfloor. I'm going to bring this here, and then I'm going to push the wire here, and they bring the the carrot. The carrot comes back very nicely without moving the valve, so that's nice. I was going to go inside the system, and then what I do here, I close the handle, and that's closed. And now what we're going to do, we're going to move the valve. Uh, try uh, floral floral frontal. I want get ready to open and then close, huh? Actually, you don't have to uh, keep it closed, keep it closed. I'm sick of sheath, I'm sick of sheath. Okay, we removed the delivery system and now we have the, so I'm gonna do a quick scene for you just to show you the valve. There is the valve. Certainly the ring is constrained through this, but the valve looks very good in this position. So now we're going to put a five pigtail catheter over this wire to do pressure measurements as well as an angiogram to assess the functionality of the valve. Flush it first. And you're going to put it over this wire. Over this wire. So we're going to put the Pigtail over the lander request, go to the LPA, do a pressure recording there, and then an angiogram. Okay, fixed wire. There's my catheter passing through the valve here.
It's not very me. The app can you show us on the screen the vitals? The vitals. Uh, can you show them the physio monitor, please? Hemodynamics. Hemodynamics. And I'm gonna there you go. hook Thanks. up here. Yeah, I'm gonna hook up here and show you pressure in the MBA. So can you do that on a scale of uh, 50, the white by itself? And you can see now the diastolic pressure is very nice. No, scale of 50, huh? So the pressure there is good. And the lateral here. So let's do a picture here and then we can do pullback. Let's look up. So now we're going to give 40 ml at 18 per second, 800 PSI. So let's just make sure that the holes are, yeah, the holes are good there. 40 ml, yeah, if you want. What's the problem? But you need to change here, so? 40 ml, rate is 20, and PSI 800. By playing, guys, okay? Good. Can you remove the physio monitor and my picture and just put the um, floor on, on big screens, frontal and lateral. Where is the frontal? That's it. So I'm going to do now biplane cine for you to see the valve. Why it's not coming, guys? Did you put contract? Huh? Huh? It's open. Do you have enough contrast? Huh? Okay. Siad, um, we have 14 yes. minutes left, so we, we have plenty of time to discuss. Uh, if yes. you want to, to I, take questions while you are waiting, we are happy with that. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, ask any question oh, while we're fixing okay, the injector, so, the injector. Great, so the answer that, the, 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 the question that, that we made before was your preference, your suggestion yes. about self panel uh, versus balloon spindle in this case, in this type of cases. Yes, I think, uh, Alejandro, that's a great question. I think with this case in particular, any balloon expandable valve of diameter of 26 millimeter or more should do a very good job with this case. Uh, we approached Venus MedTech and they were kind enough to donate this valve for this poor patient. So we elected to go with the valve. But if I had a, an Edwards valve or um, a Mark valve, uh, it would have done uh, as good a job. So uh, the, the advantage of this really, as you can see, the crimping, uh, it's the valve is protected. So it's good. The Edwards valve, we, if I used it, I would have used a dry seal sheath similar to this so that if I don't get there, I'll be able to remove it because, as you know, the delivery sheath is only 35 centimeter long. And uh, in this case, uh, similar to the Melody valve, the valve is covered completely by the sheath. So yeah, if you can't get to where you want, you can easily uh, take it out and start all over again. Yeah. But, you know, the simple answer, this patient, especially with a ring like this, a balloon expandable valve of size 26 or 27 or 28 millimeter would have done a great job. Great. See, so another question would be uh, just in terms of follow up. There was some concern about uh, sudden cardiac death and, and BTAC in patients with self expandable valves uh, in touching the right ventricular alpha tract. Do you have any comment or you have any special follow up for this kind of patients? Yeah, this patient to start with, she had VTAC and e, uh, QRS fragmentation 
uh, before and she presented with syncope uh, and that's why we implanted an ICD in her uh, as Maria showed you the initial uh, presentation. But if she did not have an ICD, we would have done a 24-hour halter to look for these episodes. And I heard some patients had VTAC and sudden death when the valve is hanging too much in the upper tract. So my follow-up in these patients is to do a halter monitor and follow these patients carefully, specifically looking for such episodes. Great. Any other question, comment? You know, may, may, going back to the question about balloon expandable or, really, or yeah. sex expandable really, valves, yeah. maybe a good reason to consider these self expandable valves in bioprosthetic, bioprosthetic previously treated patients. Sometimes the bioprosthetic, the surgical bioprosthesis, is not well aligned to the to the MPA. And so. Um, I don't know how much control the surgeon has on that, but if you have another well-aligned bioprosthesis, maybe this could be a good reason to to obtain a better alignment of the valve in RVOT and MPA. Because of that one. So yeah, in terms of, of, of uh, follow-up, um, anti-aggregation, anti-coagulation, um, how... Yeah, that's that? a great question. Actually, I do uh, aspirin for one year, and I actually ask all my patients to stay on aspirin for long, you know, longer than that. But if they want to come off aspirin after one year, then I have no problem. Any other comment from the panels? Yeah. Is Ross here? Let's do a quick transthoracic echo. We're going to do a quick transthoracic echo just to show you the the valve until they fix the injector. The injector gets busted. So we'll do a quick transthoracic echo and show you the images of the valve before. Hi, Ziad. It's Salvador. How are you? Uh, How are I you? Wanna know who, we are having problems with this dry seal here in Brazil. Uh, this valve, it's mandatory to use a long dry seal to push the, the system? No, no, it's not mandatory at all. I've done many, many, many cases uh, using just the regular delivery system. And in most, no problem. Not for this. Uh, you know, getting that where you want. In some cases, it's very difficult and it keeps looping no. because the delivery system, yeah. the torque on it is not as good as you would like. And that's why I recommend a dry seal sheath, but it is not a must to use uh, for that. It's not. Can we connect? Can we connect the uh, echo to the monitor? Yeah. It is there. So we're going to do a transthoracic echo here to show you the valve, how it's functioning. Ross is trying to do that. As you can see, open up the uh, color scanner. There is a trivial, you see it there, trivial PR. Otherwise, it looks actually very good. Get better images. Raul Rossi will, will make a comment here. Hi, Z. Yes. Great case. Um, Thank you. My question is, I mean, just for the sake of, of discussion, since we don't have uh, uh, abilities to predict the future, but when this valve fail, what do you think sh you should be the proper way to treat uh, uh, pulmonary regurg or stenosis or whatever when it fails? In <laughs> Uh, I believe in this valve, if the effective diameter is more than 25, 26 millimeter, and if it fails, I believe valvulation can be done percutaneously. If the size is less than 24 millimeter and gets narrow, putting another valve inside, you will get more gradient. So my philosophy is if the valve size is over 24, 25 millimeter, it gets uh, you know, degenerated, then I can put another percutaneous valve. But if it's smaller than this, I usually send them to the surgeon to remove everything and put a new valve. Right, thanks, man. Yeah. According you can to see the echo, the, uh, 
Can, can you, you show the, the echo, please? Because there's some leak ar around the bar. Look. Is the, the, the leak is from, from the central jet, Alejandro. Can you show them color, uh, color on the valve, on the valve? Where is the valve? You see the valve? <coughs> Very thin jet of PR. You see it there, guys? It's a flame of PR. Yeah. There it is. It's very, did it work? No, it's just... Smile. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, Where is the old injector, the uh, rack? Yes. The other injector. Hi, Siad. Marcelo Rivarola from Argentina. Uh, Hi, Marcelo. One comment, How are one you? comment and, and, and one question for, for you. Uh, you know, but my uh, my personal opinion that that is uh, the, this valve is I think is the best uh, self expandable valve for for Alfred Tract. You no, know? but uh, yes, I saw I saw you uh, the last Congress maybe use this valve in other in other prosthetic valve. This is I think it's, this yes. is the, your second case. You no, know? but uh, my concern Correct. is in the future we don't have uh, any any data any data about what will happen with this valve inside of the prosthetic valve. I, I don't know uh, because it's no, uh, the, the valve was not thought to use in, in, the, in a tube or a nomograph or in a prosthetic valve. Uh, I don't know. Uh, my concern is uh, it's possible to, to have a, a fractures in the future uh, or something else. Uh, I think it's possible to increase the, 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 the endocarditis in the future. Uh, this is my, my concern. What, what, what do you think? Marcelo, that's, that's a great comment and great concern. You know, obviously, we don't know the right answer. I think only time and collection of follow-up data is important. Uh, I mean, I don't know whether putting it in a, a constrained ring will uh, produce different forces on it than if it was just native without any uh, ring or any stint. Uh, but this is a very... Uh, comment will take in and I think only time will tell uh, about uh, you know the viability of uh, these valves just yeah, to let yeah. you know that the yeah, first yeah. valve I did in the world with the Venus P valve was in 2015 and first two patients the follow-up has been excellent and the valve when you look at them really excellent function all along even my own patient here in Doha we put the first valve in Doha in 2017 and the uh, follow-up, uh, I follow these patients once yearly, uh, excellent follow-up, no PR, no PS, and the valve looks really good. And I personally hadn't had any episode of endocarditis with, with the venous P valve. There were two cases reported in China, but I have not encountered any other cases. Perfect. Which, which system are you guys giving me? This one. This is the question. So... We have Other one, more minutes to make any comment. So uh, Jorge Gomez is going to ask you or make a comment yet. Hi, C. How okay. are you? Um, I wonder if you have any stent fractures and this is if this is a concern for you on this valve. I, I, I have not had... What's that? I have not had any stint fracture uh, for this. Remove your hand. Uh, okay, we're going to do C now. Can I go by plane? By plane. Floral. By plane. Okay, I'm going to do the, the picture now. So you have 40 ml. 40, 20. 20. Okay, so we're going to do a cine right here for you to, to show you where is the... Let me just see where, yeah, catheter is above the valve, so we're good. We're going to do a quick scene here. So the, the catheter unfortunately came to the, you can see it's at the valve. So that's not good. I need to, uh, yeah, I need to, give me the wire, the uh, light wire, yes, the glide. I'm going to repeat the picture, guys, because the catheter came back. And I needed to, to reduce the PSI, make it to 60, uh, 600. So there's my wire here. In the meantime, 
answering to Jorge's question, I have seen fractures and other people have seen that. Uh, how much, uh, it depends how much you look for that. I think in the European experience was as higher as 20%. However, having said that, that was a concern at the beginning. Usually the fractures present in the proximal third that probably is related to the contractile activity of the infundibulum and it's not progressive over the time because I have patients with six years follow up and the fractures we saw in the first month are the same so far. So there's no progressive, the valve remains with a round shape and the valve is functional which is important in the end. I'm going to repeat this injection here, guys. Sorry for that. The catheter flipped. Okay, that's much better. Yeah, so there is no PR at all. Okay. Great, we have just one minute left, so this was a fantastic case and uh, a high, highly ed educational case, so I will let you uh, just close this, this session. Yes, thank you so much, guys. Uh, by the way, today is a good day for me. I just became granddad at 12.42 p.m. today, so that's about five hours from here, from now. My son in uh, New Mexico and his wife, they had a baby boy and we called him Owen. So I'm very happy and also happy that I was able to participate in Solasi. Thank you for having us, uh, Sura Medicine, participate, contribute to the success of your program. I want to thank the entire team at Sidra from doctors, nurses, light health, technologists, anesthesia, everybody for, uh, because today is Thursday, is the weekend, so they, they were going to go home earlier, but uh, we are here to uh, advance medicine. And thank you so much, guys, for having me. And take care. Great. See you in uh, Washington, D.C. at PIX Live at the World Congress. Yeah, great. Thank you. Obrigado. Congratulations, yeah. Thank you, Francisco. Thank you.